You're definitely supposed to be here. I got that. <laughs> yeah, as he said, you know, there were so many illnesses, situations that should have made him not here. And it, it reminds me of one of my favorite quotations from Swami Vivekananda, in which he says, the bullet which is not meant to take my life, will not take it, even if you fire at point blank range. And the bullet which is meant to take my life will take it even if I'm surrounded by a hundred guards. So it sort of puts everything in a new perspective. And it, in your case, makes us realize you're definitely supposed to be here now, as you say, how to find out why. <clears throat> so many of us are indoctrinated by a culture to, I almost could hesitate to say brainwashed into believing, that our <clears throat> value, our worth, the, the importance of our being on the planet has to do with what we do. Whereas in many cases, the greatest gift that you have is who you are. And so many of us drive ourselves crazy trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do, <laughs> that we lose the nature of who I am. And so what I would say to you is, I'm not necessarily sure that it's something you're supposed to do. It certainly may be. I can't say I'm sure that it's not. All we know is that the divine universe wants you present. If it was something to do, Chances are, out of the other seven billion people on the planet, someone else could do it, right? I mean, so much of what we do, we think, oh, only I can do this properly. Only I can do that. It's me who saves, you know, who saves the day. These are just ways in which the divine and his drama, or her drama, or its drama, however we envision the divine, allows us <coughs> to move through the world holding on to our egos, feeling good about ourselves. And because the divine is so gracious and graceful, you never get a slap on the cheek as you're saying something like, I did this. I'm going to do that, I achieved this. Because ultimately, really, what the divine would do is slap you and say, you didn't do anything, I did it all. When I'm speaking, if this mic breaks, well, rather than having a seance to try to resurrect it, we'll just get a new one, right? I mean, if, if I said, okay, we've got to resurrect this mic because it's got to be this mic, people would look at, look at us like we were crazy. Just get a new mic. So if it's just an act, chances are the universe could have figured out someone else to perform it. So I would say don't sell yourself short. If you've been kept here when in your mind, by all practical reasons, you shouldn't be here, Something is wanted of you that's not just, I should start a company that does this, or I should do this, or I should achieve that. But it's something very special. And the only place to begin 
is just literally by allowing who you are <coughs> to blossom and to flower and to expand every day. Because for all we know, <coughs> your role in being here is just to be here. So that all the people who come into your presence will be touched by what you have to offer. There certainly may be something to do also. But the only way to know that is when we're present. Because none of that comes from the mind. It's not about let me sit down and chart out my five year plan. That real intuitive knowing doesn't come from the mind. It comes from someplace much, much deeper. But because we're not present, we can't hear it. And then we're, we're relegated to using the mind, which is just this play of egos and fears and acculturation and socialization and desire and desires of our parents and their agenda for us. And we've got all of these different competing voices. And we can't hear the intuition. It was like the game we played last night. And if there is something to be done, and you're present and aware, you'll hear it. <coughs> the example I always give is, you know, look at a caterpillar. It's roaming on the ground one day, for many days in a row, and then one day, <coughs> something happens. It hears a voice, it gets a tingle. I mean, I don't know exactly what it feels like to a caterpillar, but something tells it, <clears throat> climb that tree. And so it climbs the tree. And then the voice says, now go out on the branch. Now the caterpillar's never been out on a branch, so there must, must be some other voices there that are saying, are you nuts? I'm going to fall. Caterpillars don't do branches. But it goes out. And then the voice says, now weave yourself into this cocoon. Keep weaving, keep weaving, keep weaving. I know you think you're suffocating. Keep weaving. And then the voice says, now just sit still. And then one day the voice says, now burst forth and you can fly. And if the divine gave that much awareness, that inner voice, that intelligence to a caterpillar, then we must, we must certainly have enough faith that, that we would get at least as much. The problem for most of us, though, is that we're not able to be still in here. We're, we're the equivalent of the caterpillar who's spending its life, you know, jealous of the millipede who's got a thousand legs and I only have 12 <laughs> or 16 legs. And so I'm, I'm, I'm so upset that I'm not the millipede and, you know, I always get the short end of the stick, and, you know, and so we don't hear the voice that says, climb the tree, or we second guess it. No, no, you know, my parents only crawled on the ground, because, of course, when they were butterflies, we no longer recognized them, so everybody I've ever known has always only crawled on the ground. So we second guess it, or we drown it out. But if that much wisdom is in a caterpillar, if that much wisdom is in seeds, look at seeds, you plant a seed. But they don't sprout in the winter in places where you get frost. If a seed sprouted underground in the winter, it would get, it would get stuck. It would, wouldn't be able to actually burst through the ground. It would die. 
Something in the seed says, wait, wait, not the right time. And then the ground starts to thaw in springtime. And then something from within says, now. And it sprouts. So I fervently believe that that which has been gifted to all of God's other creatures, from plant life to animal life, has certainly been gifted to us. It's just that we probably have the most overdeveloped ruckus factor. <laughs> and so we're not able to hear it. So fill your life with gratitude for the fact that you're here. And try to just be as present as you can be with the knowledge that if what you were doing right here, right now, is not what you were supposed to be doing, well, that chance would be taken away from you. So if you're still here today, it means what you're doing is exactly what you're supposed to be doing.